and I hear a lot of weird sounds around. So, spill the beans. What is going <laughs> on here? What are, what are those instruments? Oh. Uh, yes. Uh, well, I mean, when you uh, when you start composing for this for this game, and uh, you need to rethink your your strategy as into uh, as you want to use live instruments, you start to look around and, uh, well, as a percussionist, it's quite easy. Um, everything makes sound, everything's an instrument. I can hit this table, oh, that's a nice sound. You know, I can, if I have a bow, I can, can, I can bow it, I can break everything. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, there were uh, um, uh, instruments that I've, seen with colleagues, I was like, oh, that is nice. I really want that instrument. And, that, uh, uh, and yes, from there it all went downhill and uh, started building things my own, you know, being, I mean, being a sound designer as well, uh, um, as a composer, um, in the beginning I thought that would keep my career back, but it helped me a lot to understand uh, the way how you can sculpt sounds and how you can make uh, a very normal sound sound really eerie and different and you don't recognize that and that's also how you make your own your own sound right you're becoming you're becoming a i mean a unique uh, uh, composer because that is your sound and uh, i think you brought something yes I for something. us to show us Really exciting things. So I need explanation for all of them. So um, this is actually the first instrument that I got outside of my drums and uh, uh, some synthesizers that I already owned. And uh, the inspiration was um, a colleague of mine, uh, Frank Wink, um, who is uh, better known by his uh, artist name, uh, Bink Beats. And... Um, he used one of these instruments in his uh, in his uh, productions. I was mind blown. I was, what is this? This is so cool. This is I had never heard this kind of uh, this sound, and I, I remember messaging him on uh, on Instagram and asking uh, Frank, what is this? I said, oh, it's a it's a psalter. I said, okay, nice. I never heard of it. So Google, yeah, Google, <laughs> Google. Um, and um, yeah, I, I found videos of people playing this. And the, the, the way to actually play it is with a bow. And it sounds... As you can hear, I'm not a very good player. But uh, that's besides the point, of course. Um, I, I liked to play it with a plectrum. It's also the way that uh, uh, Bing Beats uh, used it. And um, um, you. You can get very ethereal sounds from it. Uh, it's very nice to play melodies on it. Um, one way of doing that is trying to decipher. It's very hard to do. So uh, um, I try to uh, record it in the studio, and I, I remember, um, I think I, I spent a complete afternoon um, with no lunch, and uh, I tried to record one line of music. I was like, no, and, and every time it went wrong, because you don't have any reference like a piano. You know, you have white keys or black keys, or uh, just a drum where it's just in the middle or on the, on the sides. Um, which, uh, so it's different to, to a drum where you just have one skin and just uh, uh, hit it in the middle uh, or on the side. So after this session and uh, me being uh, really pissed off that I didn't get to record what I wanted to record, I just recorded all the notes separately and I was like, oh. And I recorded everything and I sampled everything into, into a sampler and I just played it like that. So now it's a really nice uh, wall ornament. And, it's um, beautiful. It's beautiful. I mean, beautiful. people are in awe when they say, it's, oh, what is that instrument? I, can, I cannot play it, but it's really nice. <laughs> 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 but this was not the only one, right? No, 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 no. Uh, um, uh, things went uh, downhill from there. Uh, 
the, the thing that you, when you have an instrument like this, when you have your own uh, physical instruments, live instruments, and you play them and you learn how to record that stuff and how to use it and what types of uh, um, effects to use on it or how to break it with the uh, uh, effects, um, it, it gives you an itch to get more. And what I like to do in uh, uh, in Dordrecht, we have a lot of uh, stores that are packed to the to the brim with uh, stuff. It's not like I mean, there's no theme to it. It's just stuff. <laughs> and um, uh, um, I like to go to those stores and ask, uh, "Hey, do you have something?" So the next instrument is uh, mm. that I brought is that. Uh, okay. So, um, as you can imagine, this is something that I walked past. This is not necessarily because uh, there were also similar boxes with uh, um, measuring equipment in them and uh, uh, scales and whatnot. I was like, okay, this is a bad idea. Um, and uh, uh, the fun thing is I, I was with uh, two of my colleagues the colleagues, it was uh, uh, one year ago, we were doing a Christmas uh, thing. And um, I, I asked the guy uh, behind the counter, do you have some weird instruments? Because I, I always look for weird stuff. I said, oh, yes, I have this one. And he picked it up and he opened it. And I was like, whoa, this is weird and nice. And what is it? And um, uh, now it sounds OK. But all the strings were broken and it was really sounding dull. Uh, and, and luckily for the instrument that I just shown, the Psalter, I had a complete roll of string that I could uh, restring this instrument. And um, yeah, I looked, I googled it, what it could be, and I think it's an Indian instrument called the Bulbul Tarang. Um, some colleagues uh, showed me uh, in, uh, a video of uh, someone playing it really uh, virtuosity, uh, virtuous. And uh, um, I said, yes, okay, that's not going to happen, but <laughs> I can manage myself. It looks difficult. It has a lot of random numbers. They follow uh, no order. No, no, no. And it's, uh, um, um, well, there is, there is logic to it, I think. Uh, I, I haven't uh, found it yet, but uh, uh, um, d there's some trial and error to it, so maybe this is going wrong. Sounds nice. Yeah. That sounds nice. And the, the nice thing about this is that with some instruments, like a, for example a guitar or something, you instantly hear that it's a guitar or a banjo or a whatever. And you have to, if you want it to sound differently, you have to um, layer it with so many other instruments or with a synthesizer or break it so much that it resembles uh, the guitar. Because, I mean, a guitar is, is something that just reacts to the way you play it and it has a very unique... Uh, uh, um, character, right? But it's also really, um, it has a lot of context. Everybody knows a guitar when they hear one. So, and this is an instrument that you can just put in there with a little bit of reverb and, uh, and delay on it, and it just sounds nice. And it just, it is something that's, what is this instrument? What, you know, and yeah, that is, that is, that is the nice thing about this. Um, afterwards, I, I try to look for uh, um, more instruments like this, but uh, sometimes you have to build your own stuff. And, uh, and uh, luckily I uh, have a colleague, uh, uh, Lars Tesselaar, uh, who is uh, really handy with, uh, with the tools. And uh, <laughs> uh, we together built some big boxes and put strings on them. I, I've seen you brought us one, but yeah. you have one that is huge. You didn't uh, um, no, that's br br bring it today, but you brought something special for yeah. us too. The, the blubber box, uh, as I lovingly call it, is uh, uh, almost two meters and it was a bit too heavy to take. But uh, this one is also nice, yes. So yeah. Um, so... so um, How do you call it? Um, 
Is it the name? Uh, yes. Uh, no. It's, it's we can, can, can do a baptism here and <laughs> pick a name. Yes, for yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a contest. Give this instrument a name. No, it's name a, this instrument. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a type of monochord. I mean, it's just, a, or not, not necessarily monochord, which means that you have multiple strings that are tuned in the same way like the instrument before. This is just one string. Um, this is a piano string uh, uh, without the, the copper winding. Um, and um, I had to think of a couple of ways to put tension on it because um, this is, can be quite dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, uh, yes, sit back. You never know. Now, uh, the, the big one is, uh, uh, this is the small string box, uh, as I call it, uh, during production. Um, the big one has a, a, a double bass uh, um, C string on it, mm -hmm. and I tune it even lower uh, to a, an A below, so it, uh, it goes everywhere. When I, when I bow it, I try to start always on the, on the bit where the yarn is, you know, where you aren't, ne ne where you aren't allowed to play uh, necessarily, but it screeches like, uh, like uh, nothing else. And this is... Um, why, why did you decide to create it? What were you researching for, uh, for, for, for develop something like this? Um, with the big one, I, I wanted to... Uh, I mean, sometimes you have this feeling... I mean, like a... Okay, let me put this uh, differently. As percussionists, we, uh, uh, we already talked uh, a lot in the canteen during in school uh, uh, about, uh, hey, do you know this groove? And it goes up to... We are very... Um, Experimental. We are very... No, vocal is more... Uh, right? And um, uh, with composing, it's, not, it's nothing different for me. And I just said, you know, I want this... You know, I want this blubber sound. And I said, how can I make this? So I thought, you know, I just need a big string that I can bow and just that flaps around everywhere. So with a double bass, you have the, the string and then it's really close to the neck. And uh, uh, if you play it too loud, it starts smacking the, the neck. Um, so there had to be some room in it. Uh, with this one, I experimented a little bit more uh, with uh, um, with uh, uh, the, the comb of the instrument. It's um, this is this part is a little bit shorter, and it when it starts vibrating, it starts uh, clattering against um, um, the, the 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 box itself. So I'm going to play it at first uh, soft. It doesn't sound like much now, but it is... Uh, but it sounds really like suspense or something is going to go, go really wrong. Yes, yes, yeah. and, and that's it. And luckily you can tune it. It doesn't sound like it's very tonal, but uh, you have to tune the string to, to fit it uh, uh, to the track you're working on here. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice sound source, of course, because it's full of harmonics. So when you start manipulating it in an electronic way, then you can make all kind of uh, suspense drones, I guess, I guess which, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. which are a, unique uh, of its sound. There, there were a lot of composers that uh, messaged me, uh, can you make me one? <laughs> She's awesome for horror films or something, yeah. Like, yeah. something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. <laughs> 